I hope your pockets are empty because we're about to fill them with posies. I'm joined by Teresa Sabankaya, who is the author of the Posy Book. Welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Everybody remembers posies or ringing around the posies yes. uh, when they were young. But what exactly are posies? My modern definition is a, um, a circular gathering of flowers, plants, and herbs that convey a message mm -hmm. in the language of flowers. A message in language of flowers. I and mean, this is a complicated language, actually. You know, your book is filled with examples of the meanings of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and they can mean anything from wishing somebody all the happiness in the world to, well, you deceitful little soul. <laughs> <laughs> I like to give a good example of that, and that's basil. Okay. In the language of flowers, um, it can either mean best wishes or hatred. Ah. It really depends on, you'll notice in the dictionary that some of the meanings are contradictory. Mm -hmm. And that's because I've pulled from historical dictionaries from around the world. So basil being an example, the um, French definition mm -hmm. is um, hatred. Oh. The English definition is best wishes. So sometimes they're contradictory. The so French and English could never agree on that. <laughs> that's, a, that's an ingredient for a frenemy. <laughs> okay, there you go. Which is, uh, they're supposed to be for a frenemy, am I? <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, I was joking around with you. You said this, uh, calling them 16th century emojis is pretty accurate. It is. <laughs> okay. It is. You can express any emotion. So they um, go, the, the, the tradition of posies, uh, wearable posies included, um, mm -hmm. goes way back. It does. Tell me a little bit the about 15th that. 15th century and probably prior, but what mm. we know about it is that um, it began as a real simple gathering of fragrant herbs mm -hmm. and possibly a few, you know, wildflower, sure. whatever they could yeah. get their hands on as far as floral mm -hmm. because, and they would, they would pin it to their shirts or wear it around their necks, right. put it in their pocket um, in hopes to ward off disease because at that time they they thought disease was spread um, through the odor. Through the air. And then the later the nosegay mm -hmm. um, came into play and these were a little bit um, uh, more abundant mm -hmm. because uh, in, the, in the, again out of necessity odors in right. large cities with no plumbing systems, so yeah, that's, where the, that's where the that's where the nosegay came into play. <laughs> you need a nosegay in I, the cities. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, plumbing, yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so um, I understand the tradition that you're interpreting really came into full flower, pun intended, yes. uh, during the Victorian era. Absolutely, they yeah. took the idea of a floral language, mm -hmm. um, which actually began in the Ottoman Empire. Mm. Um, and there's more about that in the book. Okay. I didn't put a lot of history mm. in the book, That's but there's a, just enough history yeah, to get good. you yeah. intrigued with it. But um, in the Ottoman Empire, uh, a salam was a greeting of mm -hmm. objects. Mm -hmm. um, it could be any object, uh, a feather, a marble, a stone, mm -hmm. and they gave it a name and it usually rhymed. Mm -hmm. In that concept was taken back to England mm -hmm. by Lady Mary Wortley Montague okay. and she wrote about it in her society papers in England and that just caught like wildfire and they turned it into the language of flowers phenomenon. Well you've done a remarkable job with this tradition of breathing new life into it um, and the the images of the the, the posies that you you've collected these recipes for yes. posies in the book, which are, and got to say, they're stunning. Thank they're you. absolutely stunning. They're Thank so, you so beautiful, much. artful, Thank you. artful. So let's. I want to walk people through some of these so they can really kind of get breathe it all in mm -hmm. fully mm -hmm. here. Um, there's a recipe called Friends to the End. Mm -hmm. Describe that one for me. Well, that's a gen, I don't want to say general, but I, I love that particular posy because um, it doesn't lock you into one particular mm -hmm. sentiment. The, the ingredients that are used in that one are just, you could, it could be, you know, used as a hostess gift, mm -hmm. um, just showing up at someone's house and having dinner and presenting a friends to the end. It conveys messages of friendship, fun, mm -hmm. joy, happiness, communal type things. Yeah. Great. Um, you could also give it to someone for a birthday. Mm -hmm. 
because it's got some longevity ingredients right. in there. Give it to your BFF. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I, I love that posy, just like I, I, I said, just a kind of a general, mm -hmm. lots of lots of different occasions you can use yeah. that one for. And if you noticed in the book, mm -hmm. there, there are 22 recipes and I realize that not everybody can grow every single of thing course. or have access. So I have offered alternate ingredients or a seasonal alter. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, a lot of these are very complicated, mm -hmm. a beautiful mix of different yeah. things. I love the forms. And, and it's like uh, you're this tight framing mm -hmm. uh, that really makes them special because. You you're, you have these little little bouquets, if you will, but you want you get a lot of eye pizzazz out <laughs> of that. You mentioned birthdays. Another one is called birthday wishes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a little over the top, really luxurious. <laughs> Very lush. <laughs> Very lush. Yes. You've got calla lilies in there mm -hmm. for magnificent beauty. Mm -hmm. um, and you have some aeonium in there for longevity and long life. Mm -hmm. And many more. <laughs> and many more. <laughs> exactly. So see, each one is kind of geared toward all the ingredients for mm -hmm. that for that occasion. Mm -hmm. Kind of emit those sentiments. Yeah. And there are so many different ones to choose from. It was really hard to choose just. They, they the average posy has about seven ingredients mm -hmm. in it. You can go more than that, and it yeah. is often very easy. Mm -hmm. Um, or sometimes it might be a struggle, and that's okay. Yeah. You can make a posy with three or four ingredients. Yeah. Well, I understand the most popular of your posies is called Fortitude. Fortitude. It's something we can all use a little more. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. That's a, what, um, that's a really wonderful posy, again, for a lot of occasions. I happen to make that one that's featured in the book for my father, who had just uh, suffered a stroke. Mm. And I thought, boy, he needs some... Fortitude right, right now. That one has a protea. I'm not sure if oh, you're yeah, familiar with of, that. Of course, yeah. Um, South African. That's plant. intent and loyalty and mm -hmm. um, basically fortitude is the meaning of that mm -hmm. particular flower. And around that I have some mint. Uh, mint is one of my favorite things to use in uh, posies yeah, because it means warmth of feeling. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Warmth of feeling and, and luscious fragrance as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. It works so well with lots of different it, things. Yeah, yeah, it does. And you yeah. know, I always tell people, pull some of the stuff out of the, you know, the recipients. You can reuse mm -hmm. some of this stuff. The mint can be dried and have some tea. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think people will have fun just exploring the different meanings of these flowers. Now, I understand that um, they were used as a way sometimes to communicate in secret. Yes, secret messages. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that during that era, the Victorian era, when this all came into play, really using flowers mm -hmm. to convey messages, it wasn't proper to approach uh, a woman or vice versa mm -hmm. and let them know how you're feeling about them and maybe ask for a date. It was a little Very more... Respect. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was a respectful way of, yeah, of communicating. Right. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Instead of, uh, a posy instead of playing footsie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> well, uh, this is a tradition I think you're going to revive. In, I hope in, so. In the 21st century, you know. And, and we have sort of left it behind. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that I revive it a little bit with the book. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. You're in Santa Cruz, yes, California, which is a, Cruz, you can California. grow a lot of different posies we out there. We can. <laughs> we can. But, you know, as I'm traveling, I'm reminded that there's a lot of things growing around here. Of course. That I can't grow. Mm -hmm. Pride of Barbados is yeah, one of isn't them. Isn't it spectacular? Oh, my yeah. gosh, what a gorgeous flower. Yeah. I did bring some seeds home just, <laughs> <laughs> just in case I can get away with it in the greenhouse. But Okay, well, you're welcome to a few Pride of Barbados if you leave some posies behind. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much for Thank being a you. guest on Central Texas Garden. What fun. This it is, has been fun. It's Thank a, you for it, having me. It's a, your book is a real treat and actually will make our audience hungry was looking at some of these things. They're, they're so delicious. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they are. Teresa, again, our, a pleasure to have you on the Thank program. Thank you so much. All right. I Coming up it. next is Daphne. Mm -hmm.